Welcome southeastern Ohio Solar Haven today and today we got some experimenting uh, set up here. We are going to talk about uh, supercapacitor banks. As you've seen in an early video, I uh, shown you how to put one of these together. This would be the 12 volt variety and what I already have here is a pack I put together a long time ago that is wired for 12 volt. Now as you can see it comes in on the positive side. It's all wired in series. You got your positive and you got your negative. Then it goes over to your positive to connect and then right back to your negative output wire. And I have this kind of going through the clamp meter doing some testing and I hooked it onto an end of a power inverter. Now this is on a 2000 watt inverter for the testing because that one's in use of course so I can use this to test with since I've not got it on any loads and a lot of people don't understand what really the need for a super capacitor is and with help with surge current on uh, their battery systems you know if you're running lead acid like I am and most other battery systems it would help uh, for testing purposes, I disconnected the 124 volt bank that I had connected here on this post. So it's disconnected. And then down here, in this old bucket, this is the monster. I don't know if I can even get a view inside this box. So I don't want to move it. This right here is a 250 farad 24 volt bank. And it connects via a connector, big connector straight to my battery bank because it works good that way too but for test purposes here today a lot of people don't understand how much surge current will it handle or what will it help with well sometimes your battery banks can't provide full current on a surge let's say you're drawing 50 amps of current and uh, on a surge in your battery bank and only provide say 40 amp surge current because certain batteries have what they call a surge rating basically it's saying that I can pull 50 amps continuously out of this battery at one shot or 40 amps like I was stating but you need to draw 50 or 60 amps out on a surge that way it'll settle down and the best way to demonstrate this is uh, with my clamp meter here and I got it set up for to, just off the uh, capacitor bank right here you can see right here you know, pretty well charged up because it's not only it's not drawing that much right now for charge so it's pretty well charged and it's connected directly to the power inverter right at the ends I put some battery clamps on there and clamped it right on now, what I'm using for demonstration purposes is a 1500 watt electric heater. On a 2000 watt inverter, now the inverter is pure sign, it does have a capability of 6000 watt surge, so it'll handle this no problem. However, sometimes they need just a little extra help you know to keep the voltages stable or if you don't want to put a lot of burn on your battery sometimes your batteries will just pull more power than you want them you know it'll pull more power from your batteries and you want to keep that electrical nice and you know keep the flow nice you know that way you don't have no surge currents these capacitors are excellent for helping with that and to demonstrate I'm going to turn this electric heater on, turn on full high, and watch what happens. Watch the amount of current amps it will draw from this capacitor bank. It will start out, draw about 3 amps, and then it will kick to high. And it's that little extra surge power, and then it will settle down. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot. And really, it technically isn't right now because, you know, the inverter really can handle the load, 
but it helped the load and in some of these older type of inverters eh, it does all right in a case to help with the surge because some of them just can't handle the surge now if you're using a smaller inverter for instance say you got a uh, 500 watt inverter and you're just sucking it at 400 watts well you want that it really helps even a thousand watt inverter at 12 volt it helps tremendously you know I'll hit the test again see what happens then it jumps up see that time it jumped up to almost four amps but then it settles back down because it stabilizes the voltages when that extra amperage is kicking back in what it does it it keeps your voltage stabilized and it doesn't really hurt your batteries that much that way turn it back off you know and I, I just wanted to demonstrate that for you guys because a lot of you don't understand it now if I had larger loads on this I'm I'm pretty sure that the draw off this capacitor bank would be 10 15 amps it could go up to about 30 or 40 amps I've seen it happen that's why I have a middle little mini bank right here and it kind of stabilizes the voltages for my, you know, uh, 24 to 12 volt knockdown. And it keeps everything, the power smooth coming out of there. And of course I got one, the larger bank, that is connected down to the battery bank, which is 250 farads. Uh, each one of these banks, uh, this one's 58.6, I believe is what they say it is. And then when you put two in series, it knocks it, cuts it in half. It's like 25, 26 farads, somewhere around there. I can't remember the exact numbers. But it, divide by two, that's your numbers. The more you add, you know, it goes down. 25 farads, a lot of capacitance in a lot of joules. Uh, in fact, you could... You charge one of these up and make your little mini rail gun. This will shoot your mini rail gun off. It'll unload quick. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a 24 volt version pack I built here a while back. I just kind of stuffed it in a box, kept everything separated. And it's, you know, it works for its purpose. And, you know, once again, you can see, I'll give you up close. Right when you turn it on, it'll give it a little bit of surge when you elements three amp and then it'll go to high heat and then it'll jump up to four but then it settles back down because that surge is not there so you understand how all that power surge is being taken by these instead of your batteries um, I hope you all learned something off that today and seen what was going on and how that actually works and I hope you got some learning in today <laughs> But anyway, uh, have a good evening, and thanks for watching. Remember, I got it right today. Click that like button. Click that subscribe button. Don't worry. It ain't going to hurt you. It only hurt once. <laughs>